It's so easy to spend hours on your phone and not really do anything. To understand this more, I downloaded an app called Your Hour. It logs how much time you spend on each app on your phone. A neat feature it has is the ability to export this data. Looking at this data in Python, we can see how much I've been using my phone for the last three months. We can see that it's quite erratic, spiking up and down between one and six hours a day. Six hours is a crazy amount of time to spend on your phone. Averaging for the day of the week, we can see that weekends have higher use, whereas weekdays have lower use while I'm being very productive at work. And we can calculate the total amount of time spent in each individual app. WhatsApp, Instagram, Reddit, and YouTube are the main offenders, as well as some other apps. Lots and lots of research has gone into the addictiveness of mobile phones. Let's have a look at Instagram to see why. There's always something to see. All the stories, the suggestions, seeing what your friends are liking. Then of course, scrolling down the homepage. I'll let Randy from South Park explain why time spent on your phone is a bit of a problem. He's talking about smoking pot, but the same is true for time on your phone. Well son, pot makes you feel fine with being bored and it's when you're bored that you should be learning some new skill or discovering some new science or being creative. They make you okay with being bored. And once you make a connection between boredom and your phone, it soon becomes a reflex. And what about when we're feeling bored? Well, that's when people go onto YouTube or Reddit, check stock prices, sports scores, the front page news, lots of these solutions for this painful internal trigger of boredom. All of these apps have tapped into this idea. As soon as you're bored or have a spare second, you feel the urge to check your phone. The more time you're checking, the more time you're spending in their app. This allows them to collect more data, and the more data they collect, the more they get to know you. Nowadays, it's a lot easier to request what data a company has on you. We see that Instagram stores all of your conversations, they store every post you like, every comment you make and has been made on all your photos, as well as everything you search for. They also already have your age, gender, and where you live. And why do they want this data? What we buy, where we shop, where we live, what our families are doing. And it's now being shared with Facebook so that Facebook can target ads back to the user. A more accurate picture of who you are means more targeted adverts, which means you're more likely to click, which means more money, which we can see from Facebook's financial statements. As their daily and monthly active user base grows, so too does their revenue from advertising. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. They provide a service, and in return, sell adverts. Until they unleash this data and power with a dangerous lack of care and responsibility. Which is described in Carol Codwallader's TED talk about Facebook's role in the Brexit referendum. Vote leave unleashed a fire hose of disinformation. Ads like this. This is a lie. It's a total lie. Turkey is not joining the European Union. And most of us, we never saw these ads because we were not the target of them. Vote Leave identified a tiny sliver of people who it identified as persuadable, and they saw them. If you see an advert with an alarming fact, you have to take the time to validate it especially as there may be a second Brexit referendum and general elections in the UK and the US. Don't forget that, despite all of this, the internet, mobile phones and social media have all been a wonderful invention. All of human knowledge is within the fingertips of almost 3 billion people, as anyone with a smartphone can access Wikipedia. You can learn languages, play guitar, how to dance, fix a leaky tap, watch interesting videos about knife crime in London, and even volunteer your eyesight to help blind people. Simply choose if you need help or want to help by the click of a button. That's a nice picture of you and your family, Caroline. While all of these things and more are accessible to everyone with a smartphone, it's still very easy to get trapped in non-productive apps. 
Most phones these days have built-in digital well-being or screen time counters. Don't let your phone be your go-to cure for your boredom, or before you know it, hours can pass. And as Randy says, that's the time to be learning a new skill or being creative. Ironically, I spent ages procrastinating on my phone while trying to make this video. But by paying attention to the time spent on my phone, I managed to get it finished. Thanks for watching.